I know you guys have seen this before from DJI, but now they are in the power bank game. In this video, we are going to be going in depth with the Power 1000. So we all know there are a bunch of power banks already on the market. So we wanna see what makes the Power 1000 different than those ones. So obvious one is that the drone, DJI makes incredible drones. And as you can see from this one, the power bank looks very similar. It has the black and the gray look. It has the subtle orange uh, colorway in between like the USB, the little uh, font down here as well. And even the sound is the same. So when you turn it on, it sounds just like the drone. So if you like the drone and how it looks, you're going to love this. But my favorite part is probably these two ports on the very end here. So the SDC and the SDC light is what they are calling it. This kind of separates DJI from everyone else. And the reason for that is they have pretty much prepared their power bank for the future. And what I mean by that is this is kind of, think of it like a, a USB almost. What you do with this is you plug your SDC or SDC light into one of these, and then it converts into whatever you want it. For this one, this is like a cigarette lighter plug. And there is this other one where is a male. This will charge the Power 1000 using the SDC connector. And then there is a SDC to drone connector as well, which is very nice because if you have a drone that will fast charge your drone. So instead of taking like an hour or so, it's only going to take 30 minutes. So we know these drones are getting better, but their battery, in my opinion, could still last longer. So having a spare battery is nice and being able to charge it quickly is even nicer. So if you have a drone, that is one of the main reasons I think you should look into the Power 1000. You can see here we have this a AC unit plugged into the AC. We have the fridge plugged in using the SD light adapter with the car port outlet cigarette lighter. And these other USBs right here, we have the standard USB A's and then we have a couple of USB C's. Those are the nice ones because it runs or it can power out 140 watts each USB-C. So if you have something that pulls that much like a 16 inch uh, MacBook, for example, those can power it and charge it pretty quickly, especially without the brick that it, it comes with, the charging brick. So you can just take that off and plug it directly into the USB-C and use it that way. So what you guys are seeing here is how loud the AC unit is so it's running about 82, 83 decibels. We're gonna shut this guy off and then we're gonna move this over to the Power 1000. So as that is shutting down the decibel outside, so about 65 or so. So as I'm talking, it keeps spiking, but we're gonna bring it over here. So there are fans on both sides of the 1000. I'm just gonna hold it up to it. So it's about 43, 44, which is half the numbers of the AC unit and even quieter than the ambient noise around us. Let's try the other side just to make sure. So it's about the same, 44, 45 decibels with the ambient noise that's kind of around us. If we were in a more of a controlled room where it's just quiet, I believe this runs about 23 to 25. So extremely quiet. So if you are trying to sleep in the tent and you have the Power 1000 with you, there's really not gonna be any white noise or background noise besides kind of the area you're sleeping in. So if you have this at home in your house for whatever reason, your power goes out or anything like that and you needed some power and maybe some AC or heat, 
you can use this and this will be the quietest equipment that you're using. The Power 1000 has a pretty high capacity. It could do 4,400 watts at peak capacity and then 2,600 for about 30 seconds, but it's supposed to be able to do 2,200 until the battery is completely dead. So we're gonna test it out. So we have a couple things on the table here. So let's flip the kettle on. That's set to boil. It's gonna peak out at 1,500, roughly 1,497. And then we're gonna turn the induction stove on as well to see what it's at. So this is set to medium right away. So it jumps up to about 25. We're gonna turn that down. In a little bit, it's, this is gonna beep, letting us know that it's over the capacity. So we're gonna turn this down so that way it drops below 2,400. So that beep is gonna let you know like you have about 30 seconds or so before the Power 1000 shuts off. So as we turn it down, it drops below. So it's gonna go fluctuate between um, above 2200 and then down. This is set to, it's two out of uh, 10, I believe. So this is kind of like a very low, but you can see the steam is still coming out of here. So still hot enough for that. So it's jumping over 2200 coming back down. So that's pretty, it's pretty good that it's handling both of these. This kettle alone is gonna run at 1500 until it boils. But this maxes out at 1800, so we're not gonna max it out, like I said. We're just gonna let it run and see how it does. I wanted to note one thing. The noise that's coming out of, of the induction stove is a lot louder than the Power 1000 itself. So the induction stove is actually a lot louder than this. And I was putting the mic right up to the fan. So you guys can kind of hear the, the difference there. But this, the electric kettle just finished. So it, this is dropping down to just running the induction stove alone. So as we saw there, the Power 1000 can definitely handle 2200 watts and above that for a short amount of time. And it is nice that it has an audible beep to let you know that you're above that level. So it kind of gives you a time frame to when this will shut down if you keep it at that state. So that's pretty nice. So what we're gonna do now, you know, we have depleted the battery just a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna charge it and the charging port is right on the front side here. We're gonna plug it in. Right above the charging port, there is a dial or switch. You can charge the 1000 from 600 watts or you can charge it at 1200 watts. So if you needed this in a hurry, you can flip this to 1200, plug it in and charge it that way. So once we have it plugged in, this will start to climb and then the input currently reads 1178. So pretty much right at that 1200 watts that we were, uh, you know, told. And then it reads right here. I like that little kind of dial that it, it's charging. So it reads 44 minutes until this is fully charged from 41% all the way up to 100. But the only thing is if you wanted to kind of conserve the internal battery of the Power 1000, it would be better to charge this at 600 watts instead of 1200, just because anytime you're fast charging pretty much anything with a battery, it really reduces the lifespan of that battery. So I try not to use fast charging on things that I try to keep for a long time just because I know you're, I'm just kind of slowly hurting the battery, but you do have the option to quickly charge it if you need this in a hurry. So here are a few things that I would normally bring on a camping trip during the summer. I have my fridge, I have like a portable AC unit. This is really for the kids. So if I'm with the wife and the kids, this is nice because they still take midday naps. So in the middle of summer, uh, if you're not in the mountains, it gets like 100 degrees in the tent. So having the 
AC unit is extremely helpful. It's on right now, which you could probably hear. It's pulling 100, and 100 watts or so. The fridge pulls about 40 watts. So right now it's around 140. So this is kind of what I would normally bring and then charging the drone, charging my phone, laptop, all that stuff. So to conclude, if you have a DJI 1000 or if you want a power bank that can support a lot of wattage output, look into the Power 1000 because this has become one of my favorite power banks on the market for sure. So I will have a link to this down in the description if you wanted to see it and check it out and pick one up yourself. But that's gonna be it for this video. We will see you guys next time.